Good girl. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Anne, and we are doing your Foster Ambassador update. And today we're going to talk about enrichment. Um, enrichment is really important for dogs because it keeps their minds active, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. So we're going to talk about some different things that you can do with your dogs for enrichment. And this is particularly important um, for people who have our fostering heartworm positive dogs because we have to keep them physically calm, but we want to keep them mentally active. Um, so some of the easy things, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Anne busy on some enrichment right now. Hey, stop it. Sit. Sit. Thank you. So one of the easy things, sit, is just some frozen vegetables. So this is pumpkin puree. Throw it in an ice cube tray, freeze it up. Um, you really like it. Just make sure it's a dog safe uh, vegetable. So I'm going to let Anne work on that right now. Um, another thing is that is a calm, a frozen calm. So we have one of those two. It's calm happy hour here in the Neelick house. Um, <laughs> and just took her pumpkin cube off to uh, to the bed to, to, uh, to eat it right now. So um, I've got two other dogs working on frozen Kongs right now. Frozen Kongs are really easy and they keep a dog occupied for a long time. They can also be really great if dogs are trying to gain or lose weight because you can fill them with different things. So my dogs are at healthy weight. So I fill it about 90% of the way with plain old dog kibble. And then I top it with some peanut butter, or this is easy cheese because Anne's not really a huge fan of peanut butter. You freeze it and it takes them a little bit longer to get through whatever that topper is. So because it's calm happy hour, I'm gonna go ahead and give this to Anne. Anne, come here. Well, she's working on the other pumpkin cube, but I guarantee you she'll be back for her calm happy hour. It's a daily tradition here in the Bailey house, which is um, something that is super important is establishing a routine um, if you're planning on going back to work um, and a midday routine like this, maybe you do it right now, but maybe you'll bring a dog walker in when you go back to work. So they come in for work. Come here. Come here, Ann. Um, they come in to walk the dogs and they leave a frozen calm at the end. Um, and you can see she's going to enjoy that. So some of the other stuff that we have here, licky mats are great. They have these grooves in them, fill them with peanut butter or something else that's spreadable and dogs go at them. Um, probably not a good idea to leave this with a chewer. Treat puzzles are also great. You put treats or kibble in the wells, um, and they usually have a couple of different options. One is the treat is right underneath the well, and another one, they would have to take all of the covers off and rotate to find the treats that are maybe in a hidden well. Um, so these are really great. Um, these can also double as a slow feeder if you have a dog that is a scarfer. And the last one I'm going to talk about is snuffle mats. Um, I promised our Tennessee coordinator that I would talk about snuffle mats. So snuffle mats are great scent training. Um, and you hide treats in the, in the weave um, and the dogs find them. And they're super simple to make. You can buy them as well, um, but they're super simple to make. You just need a mat that has holes in it. You can buy a floor mat like this one or one that goes in um, like a kitchen sink or something, as long as it has holes in it. And a lightweight fleece. This doesn't have to be expensive. This is a remnant. So I think I got it for five bucks at the fabric store. Usually they're 50% off of whatever. And it doesn't matter what it has on it because your dog doesn't care. This one has bumblebees on it, but who cares? Um, so you got your raw materials, then you're going to make fleece confetti. Um, you just cut it into little strips. It doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same length. They don't have to be the same width. Um, but, you know, half an inch to an inch wide and six to eight inches long. And then you just take the fleece and you weave it through the holes. And you tie them off. Just a simple knot. Doesn't even have to be a double knot. You just tie a knot. And you tie one at every position. So if you were, if the holes are clock, probably one at 12, three, six, and nine of every little hole. So it takes a little while, but you can do it. I cut these strips with pinking shears and that gives them this nice little scalloped edge. You probably can't see from this far away on the video. Um, but these are just because this is the sharpest scissors that I had in the house. Any old scissors will do. Um, this I have left over from a project. I'm probably going to use that too. So um, you can really use anything. You do want a little bit of a heavyweight material like fleece. Um, but I think I made three for like 40 bucks, maybe 50 bucks. Um, and it'll cost you that for one if you buy them instead of making them. And in the end, they look like this. So this is why it really doesn't matter. 
um, what it has on it. This is going to get cut in the strips. These used to be ladybugs. Um, now they're just little red splotches. And then if I can get Anne to come back over here, Anne, come here. She is settled in with her little, um, with her Kong right now. So then what you do is generally speaking, you have to teach them how to use it. So I've got some training treats here in the presence of the dog. And come here. Hey, hey, come here. Come here, good girl. So in the presence of the dog, you would just sprinkle them in the mat. And then you can't see because it's off video, but she's reaching into the mat to find them. And then as they get better, um, you would hide them further in the shag and not within their eyesight. And then they have to sniff out where to find the things. Um, this obviously is not something you want to leave with a dog unattended because it's just these little strips of fleece. And if they swallow one of these, um, it's a bad day for the dog and an expensive trip to the vet. Um, so that is your video on enrichment. Um, hopefully as you're going back to work, you're doing good things to keep your dog mentally active. Um, for our fosters out there, these are all things you can do with your foster dogs for not a lot of money to keep their mind active, even if their bodies can't be. All right, that's all from here. Have a good day, everybody.